Welcome to church. You know, you don't have to have a big crowd to have church. No, that's to right. have God just show up. And, uh, you know, my, my standard kind of always is uh, if I would go hunting, I should probably go to church. And uh, six inches of snow, that's a perfect time to be in the woods. So, uh, why did you buy a four-wheel drive pickup anyhow? Right. If you're not going to use it to get to church on Sunday morning. Amen. And uh, some of you are not here. Are, are we going? Are we rolling? Welcome. And uh, some of you, thank you for not coming. I did not want to have you fall down and have to visit you in the hospital. <laughs> so, uh, it's never the same as actually being here. Because we still have some baked goods left over from last week. And they're delicious. We are talking this month uh, about relationships. And uh, last week we talked a little bit about uh, that baseline relationship, the core relationship that will impact all other relationships, and that's your relationship with God. That until you have a right relationship with God, you're going to struggle in your other relationships because you have a sin nature. You have a sin, a selfish nature. Amen. Right? Yes. Yep. Just, I'm just saying, that's how it works. You, you, you tend to look out for number one. And... Uh, Looking out for number one does not build healthy relationships. That's not what relationships are all about. And so, uh, this past week, you know, is the uh, is that whole celebration of relationships. So we're going to read, read out of Genesis chapter two uh, this morning, Genesis chapter two. But uh, as I uh, as I was at Walmart on Thursday morning, and uh, I was there to get the donuts for the for the guys. I know they're cheaper there. I know it's right on the way. And uh, so as I'm uh, as I'm walking by the aisles, having been to the store the day before, there was a lot of guys there that were under pressure. I could just see the stress in their faces. They were trying to find a card. <laughs> any card just one that maybe sort of kind of said I love you and also the ones they could find were oh happy valentines to my daughter or to my mother or and you're like no that's not the one I need and then they're you know whatever the price they're buying the flowers uh, and uh, I saw I mentioned this on my Thursday thing but the, the, the average guy spends 300 and Sixty some dollars on thing on Valentine's Day, <laughs> and the average woman spends sixty four dollars. I'm like, guys, we're getting hosed. <laughs> this is kind of how it works. Always have. But uh, as much as we kind of make fun of uh, Valentine's Day and the whole thing, romantic relationships are God's idea. Amen. These are God's idea. Uh, some people. Uh, you know, the title is Romantic Relationships. Some people call them Rocky Relationships. Because Romantic Relationships tend to be like roller coasters. And you're all like, what, what? Well, I'm just saying that Romantic, that, that white hot fire that burns there is an emotional thing that... People say that there is a fine line between romantic love and insanity. Uh, amen. And, and so, um, so there, there is that whole thing. So you say, well, just a point. No, this really is God's plan. In fact, we go back to Genesis, and God had formed the heavens and the earth. He had formed all those things. He had made everything but snow up to that point. <laughs> Snow came after the fall. It was one of the curses. 
I am done with snow this year. Please, God, no more. And uh, he had made all these things, and he had made man, and, and he was interacting with man. And it says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. I will provide somebody to be with him. Mankind was never meant to be alone. That's not how God designed it. You were never designed to have to go through all of your life alone. Now, relationships. The quality of your life is based on what? William, help us out with money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I asked that on Wednesday night, and William said, money? I'm like, no! The, qual <laughs> the quality of your life is based on your relationships. The quality, text that, tweet that, whatever, but that is, that's a baseline. The quality of your life is not based on your possessions or your money or your position. That's not what brings quality. It's your relationships. And the quality of your relationships is based on how hard you work at them. How hard you work at them. Well, you know, the uh, whole romantic thing, it's funny. Because as I was at the store... And they had those those little hearts, the little ones, the little candy ones. Yes, the, and they have little things on them, and one of them is "Be mine." And uh, do you remember when you were like in second grade, and you tried to put that one in the card to the girl that you yep. kind of liked, "Be mine," and she was like, "No." Not a chance. Not a chance. Clear back then, you were like, God put us. He put something in us that is a natural, healthy, godly thing of where the butterflies go and, uh, you know, your heart goes pitter-patter. And uh, some of you are like, well, Pastor, uh, I'm kind of old for that. No, you're not. I don't care how old you are, if you're still alive, that stuff still works. It still happens. It's still... So, the, the key is, we're going to look at the keys of how to make this work, because there are two truths. There is nothing better than a godly marriage and there is nothing worse than a ungodly marriage. Marriage can be the absolute best or it can be the absolute worst. And uh, so so if you go back to that insanity thing, you kind of have to you need to have some parameters before you lose your mind. Right? Yes. That's, that's a good thing. They have some parameters in place already so that when you go through that season of insanity, you come out right. And so um, the Bible talks about who should be your spouse. In the Old Testament, it says, don't marry any of these foreigners. Do not let your sons get wives from these other places. That you need to have a godly spouse. Finding the right one. First of all, well, we, I have an idea for you on how, uh, Pastor Drew, uh, we'll see if this works for you. Some of you who are this is the worst date I've ever been on. I bet my shoes cost more than your stupid boat does. I am not touching your worm. 
No more blind dates for me. Time to be crap, 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 crap. Folks just don't get it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I could not resist. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I am not sure that is where you find a godly spouse. But it is entertaining. You know, uh, when you when you are in that span of time, when you are pre-meeting that person that's God. See, with Adam, God provided. Does God provide for your finances? Yeah. Does he provide for your healing? Does he provide for your eternal yes. place where you're going to stay? <laughs> yeah. Eternal dwelling? Yes. Will he provide people to come around you and love you and fulfill the needs of your life? Amen. He will. He will. See, that's the first thing to say, okay, God, I want your perfect person in your perfect time. Sometimes... Sometimes we don't wait um, for God's timing. We get in a hurry. So we're like, God, send that perfect person along. And he's like, you're not ready. See, if you put broken parts in a broken machine, it doesn't get any better. God wants you to be healthy. You cannot have two unhealthy people come together and have a healthy relationship. One of the things that they teach you in drug dependency or alcohol, you have to get well before you can have a healthy relationship. You have to allow God to heal what's inside of you. That God relationship, not just connect with God, but to allow Him to heal and fix the damaged parts inside of us. Because all of us have been damaged in our walk through life. People have said and done things and were damaged, and we need God to, to heal that because hurting people hurt people. And you can't have a healthy relationship when you still have a bunch of junk going on. So you say, okay, God, instead of working on FarmersOnly.com, swipe left, swipe left. I, I'm not sure which way you're even supposed to swipe. And some of you are like, uh, you tell me, but you're embarrassed. <laughs> it, and it, 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 you can... Uh, you can meet godly people online. You actually can. The, uh, yeah. I remember my uncle about 15 years ago. My aunt had passed away. And they, she, she grew up on the farm. And she had the chance to date a lot of different guys. But she was waiting for a man of God. A man who was going to serve God and live for God. Who loved God before he met her, and he didn't just start loving God so that they could have a relationship. And so, I think she was 40 when they got married, and uh, just had a great, great marriage. Then she got cancer and passed away, and uh, my uncle loved her. I mean, he, he just absolutely loved her, and uh, for it was the kind of love where when she was gone, he was devastated. He didn't really have to work, and, and honestly, he sat inside their house and just mourned for almost five years. I mean, he just couldn't process. And then 
the kids were younger and we, I called and said, hey, you want to go to a basketball game? And he goes, yeah. And so we got him out and went to the basketball game and he goes, uh, yeah, I, uh, I met somebody. I'm like, awesome. That is great. I said, how'd you meet her? He goes, um, online. <laughs> like, okay. He was 65 computer dating. I was like, how did you figure out how to even get on there? Huh? How does that even work? But he met an awesome, wonderful, godly lady. You see, you have to set up some parameters, and the first number one parameter, it has to be, the scripture says, do not be unequally yoked together. Do they love God? Because if they don't love God, you're going in separate directions. You're not going in the same way. And I don't know, I heard there's a, there's a car race today. Something down in Daytona, maybe? You know, and some people are like, ah, it's so boring. They're all just going around a circle, turning left, going in the same direction. And I'm like, I know, wouldn't it be much more fun if some of them were going the other way? <laughs> I mean, entertaining. <laughs> no, they're like, no, no, that's not a good plan. You want everybody going in the same direction. When you are in love with somebody, for you guys to A, be in love with Jesus together, and then in love with each other, to, to love each other, to have those kind of things where your heart still flutters. You still have a sense of excitement when you, when you see them, when they call, when stuff happens. Okay, I get it, not every time. But to do, to do those things, to have that, I love you. To say those words. You see, in Revelations, God, God's relationship with the church is a little bit like how ours should be with our spouse. He said, he said, I have this against you. you. You've lost your first love. You have lost the excitement and the passion that you once had. And now you're just kind of going through the motions. See, for those of you who are not married, here's a clue. And it was interesting. I have a, a friend who got married not very long ago who said, Pastor, those things you said, those really are true. I'm like, hello. <laughs> when you're dating, when people are dating, they tend to be on their best behavior. Unless you date them long enough. And so... So people view the marriage, the act of marriage, as the kind of the, okay, got it, done. No, that is just the beginning. That is just the beginning of a relationship, of continuing to build a in-love relationship. To, see, in America, and I think in the world, marriage has gotten a really, really bad rap. Nobody wants to get married. Nobody wants to do these things. But marriage is God's plan. His plan is that you meet somebody and that you, you begin to fall in love with them and you have an excitement about being with them and talking with them. And then he says, and then you need to build your relationship mentally to find out what they like. To find out if you guys are connected, if, you, if you're in the same ballpark. If, if, if one of you is a serious, serious right-wing conservative and the other is a flaming left-wing liberal, eh, might not work. If one of you is a city girl and the other is a farmer, might not work. You gotta say, okay, here's some parameters. First of all, they need to be a, a man or a woman of God who loves God. But then to say, okay, do we do we connect? Do we do we fit together? And uh, 
And you know, the amazing thing is God can take people who seem like unlikely matches and he can bring them together. And so you begin to spend time with them, godly time, time of building relationship. And see, in America right now, we are so upside down and everything is backwards and uh, people meet, they chat a time or two, and they jump in bed. And it stymies their relationship. When you jump into the physical aspect of the relationship, it tends to distort the others. You need to grow spiritually, mentally, socially together. You need to do stuff together. You need to grow in your relationship. Because God says the last part of your relationship that cements it together is that physical relationship. That's that last thing that comes. He says, he says about the church, he says, I'm coming for a bride that's pure and spotless. To say, okay, here's what I'm looking for. To be the kind of person that your to-be spouse will be proud to take home to mom and dad. To say, yeah, because they have prepared in the span of their life and allowed God to prepare them to be that spouse, that godly spouse that you pull together, that you encourage, that you help, that you love, to walk through that process. So um, as you are in that dating process, in that relationship building process, relationship building process, <clears throat> that race thing that's going to happen today, at certain points, somebody's going to make a mistake. And then all around the, the track, there'll be these little yellow lights that will come on, and this guy will wave this yellow flag waves this yellow flag. See, I've seen a lot of couples who were so excited about the feelings that they forgot to pay attention to the flags. To the flags. Because sometimes in a relationship, you meet them, you're excited, and as you begin to grow in your relationship, as you begin to get to know them, little yellow flags pop up. Now, if those race car drivers just ignore that yellow flag, they're going to have an accident. And if it's really, really serious, boom, they hit the red flag and everybody just stops right where they're at. They just stop. So that things can get sorted out. Sometimes in your relationships, there'll be yellow flags. There'll be yellow flags. There'll be things where you'll think, okay, so he steals from work, but he's a pretty, he's a pretty good guy. I mean, he steals from work, but I mean, he's a, you know, you know, I, He's an axe murderer, but, uh, you know, Ted Bundy was a really, really nice guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, there were women who said, we, they, they, no, red flags, red flags, when there are issues in their life, when they are, are not honest, when they are not honest with you, that is a red flag. When they are lying to you, if they're lying to you now, they're going to lie to you, then it's only going to get worse. However the dating is, guys tend to drop down a notch or so after that you get married. Just saying. Shouldn't be like that, but reality is, it's like, oh, we're married now. Huh. I can stop picking up my, I, you know, I can stop whatever. No, no. See, the scripture says, You'll reap what you sow. 
you know, reap what you sow. And so in our relationships, so sometimes we think about romantic relationships and we think about dating, we think about that stuff, and then you get married and then you're kind of like, okay, we're married, blah, blah, blah. But see, you still have a yearn, a desire for romantic kind of relationships, and if your relationship isn't flowing and working, some, you are open to romance from somewhere else that is not of God. You know, I heard somebody say, a lady say, you know, God told me I need to leave my husband and marry this guy. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. God said you need to repent of your sin, you need to take control of your thought life, and you need to turn back and ask your husband or wife to forgive you and to rekindle the fire, to, to make a new heart, a new passion, a new excitement where, where you can still have those butterflies and all that stuff. <laughs> and you're like, oh, do I have to? <sighs> yes, you have to. It's the rule. It's part of how God made you. To, to have that relationship that is like our relationship with God. You see, we live in a throwaway society. Everything we have, you know, paper plates, everything's throwaway. Everything's throwaway. And relationships in the world tend to be just like that. God says, no, this is how it needs to be. He says, I want you to meet that right person I'll bring into your life, and then I want you to date them, I want you to romance them, I want you to, to win them over, then I want you to marry them, and then I want children. I want you to, have, I want, I want you to be blessed with children. Children are a blessing. Most of the time. Grandchildren are a blessing all the time. God says in Malachi, he says, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. And uh, we live in a world of Divorce. Some of you have been through divorce and had to feel the pain and the hurt and all the junk and all that stuff. That was never, ever God's plan. Never his plan. He says, I hate divorce because I want to have godly children. I want to see godly offspring because he hates divorce because of what it does to the kids. And sometimes it's, you know, God picks us up right wherever we're at. I'm just telling you that. So if you're in that process, I've gone through that process, God comes along and says, I want to pick you up right here. But I don't want you to go back down that path. So you have to set up some guards, some parameters, some, some protection, so that you don't, quote, fall in love with the wrong person again. That you don't get emotionally attached. You, Scripture says for us to to take every thought captive, that there are going to be thoughts and there are going to be people who are going to come along and they're going to tempt you. In Proverbs chapter 5 and 6, it talks about the prostitute and how she comes out and she says, oh, you were such a hunk. <laughs> Ooh, you know, I've got my perfume on and i, I got fresh sheets on and my husband's gone and nobody will ever know. The Bible says it's like going into the pit of death. It says don't do it. Stay with the wife of your youth. To rejoice in the wife of, well, some of you aren't that young, but I mean <laughs> the wife of, the wife that you're in with right now. You know, and I've seen, I've seen these studies that, that, People who are mentally de deficient, 
They come up and they say, oh, you need to have an affair. It will help your marriage. No, they are, they, they've lost their stinking minds. They are wrong. It destroys trust. It destroys relationship. No, it's wrong. They say, oh, kids are better off with the parents being divorced than the parents being together and fighting. And I think, no, C, neither A nor B, but C. How about parents falling back in love with each other and building a healthy relationship? You see, planting good seed, you have to work at a relationship. The quality of your life is based on the quality of your relationships, and the quality of your relationships is based on how hard you work on them. Planting, sowing, and reaping. My father talked about that all the time, about sowing and reaping, the how that you have to plant good deeds. And so when he was doing marriage counseling, he would give assignments. He would say, okay. He'd say, husband, I want you to do two nice things for your wife this week. And then he'd say, ladies, I want you to do one nice thing for your husband. You know, she's got to take care of the kids. It's, it's, she's just busy, you know. <laughs> planting good seed. Planting good seed in your spouse. Planting good seed with your words. Planting good seed with your actions. Planting good seed. The base of a great nation is families. The base of a great church is families. Healthy families with kids who grow up and understand their love and their security there. They're not afraid that their parents are going to leave or all this other stuff. But they, they are a couple who are united together in their walk with God and with each other. And so, I know, it's a smaller crowd, but for whatever reason, I was like, God, I don't know, why am I preaching this this week? I don't know, because somebody needed to hear it. God wants you to have healthy relationships, so maybe in your marriage, it's been a struggle. And you've been tempted. And God's saying, realign your focus. Realign your focus. Remember to who you made the commitment before God and man. This is your spouse. Maybe you're single right now. And somebody's come along. And you kind of like them. They're cute. They got a good job and a lot of money. And you're like, eh, you know, last time I married for love. <laughs> <laughs> this time I'm going for money, honey. <laughs> if they're not godly, it won't work. It won't work. You know, and... Uh, I'm a guy, so I will speak about guys. Guys are, I don't have a single daughter yet, and guys are jerks, okay? I'm just saying, guys can really be jerks. They will they will play the game until you get married, and then they'll be like, eh, yeah, got you now. Ladies, if, if they're not going to church without you, there will come a time when they won't go to church with you. You gotta find a guy who's in love with God. They're hard to find. Guys, same <clears throat> direction. To find a, a young lady who is in love with God. There's nothing better than a godly marriage. And nothing worse than being unequally yoked together. Let's bow our heads. The baseline to having a healthy, godly, romantic relationship 
is our walk with God. Is our walk with God. If we have put our faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then he helps us to be forgiving and loving and being the kind of spouse that he's called us to be. The kind of spouse that makes being married fun. Nobody's perfect. Jesus in such a way that you got to talk to him every day. You're in love. You're in love. And he talks to you because he loved you. He gave his life for you. This morning, if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, to forgive your sins and to change your heart, I just ask you, I invite you to slip up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. I, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. relationships are a disaster destroyed everybody else is rejected and turned away from you but Jesus is still reaching out to you to put his arms around you and he's saying I love you you're beautiful and I love you I care about you I want to forgive your sin if that's you all you have to do is simply pray and just say Jesus I'm sorry for my sins please forgive my sins and change my heart I want to have a fresh fire for you a fresh excitement maybe you've been a Christian a long time and you're kind of going through the motion and he would say to you like he said in the church in Revelation I have this against you you've lost your first love Jesus, reignite that fire in us. Jesus, Jesus, Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus. The relationship with the spouse is going to impact how your kids are raised. Men, when you think about marrying a young lady, think, she's the one who's going to train up my children. Is she going to raise them to serve God? Is she a godly woman who will pour godly things into them? That's a big deal.
love somebody with the kind of love and you know my uncle met another godly lady and he married her and we were down and they're down in Arizona and we were down there a little while back a couple years ago and uh, we went out in the garage and he said hey his my aunt was artist he said uh, he started to get out a box of her stuff and he just started to cry because he just loved her you know he loves his current wife but he still loves ladies I think you're looking for a guy who will cry for you after you've been gone 15 years 20 years he still and I was just like wow I thought wow I don't know God wants to make us into those kind of people and bring those people into our lives and most of all he loves you he loves you are you going to get it all right? You know, and that's uh, coming out of another relationship time, but you know what? Part of the whole thing is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Because there's going to be, I listened to the radio on Friday, and they had a call in thing about, am I a dirtbag? They had guys call in who totally forgot to do anything for their spouse on Valentine's Day. They're, they're calling and say, yeah, I'm a dirtbag. Uh, could you help me out? <laughs> I'm praying that they have forgiving spouses. To go and love each other. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor. Love your spouse love the person that God brought into your life with his kind of love. Let me pray for you as we close. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for your great love that, that is the standard for us. You set the standard. You reached out and you loved us while we were still unlovely. You forgave our sins. You walked with us through every situation. Lord, let us be as excited about loving you as we were that first time when you forgave our sins and made us new. Lord, help us to have a fresh relationship. I pray for each marriage and relationship who's here today. Jesus, that you will refresh and renew those relationships. That there will be a fresh excitement, a fresh passion for you and for each other in a godly way. In your name.